Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Alan Knight, and I am now the Chapin Fellow in Psychology. Uh, I did my fellowship at, with uh, Dr. Chadi Kalarje at uh, the UI Capsule Lab at uh, the University of Iowa uh, Medical College. The Kalarje Lab, uh, its official name is the Child and Adolescent Psychopharmacology Safety and Understanding Laboratory. What that, <laughs> what that basically means is this is a, uh, it, this association seeks to uh, understand the way that we treat psychiatric illnesses in our nation's young people and how we can maybe improve those treatment regimens. Oftentimes, these medications have pretty severe side effects, and uh, this group seeks to alleviate those side effects. Now, uh, there were maybe a half dozen <laughs> concurrent studies that were, uh, that were uh, being carried out by Dr. Kalarje and his assistants. But there were two that I had a, uh, a more direct role in. Uh, the first one, we just called SSRI. Now, an SSRI is uh, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. That's a depression medication that you might have seen ads for. Uh, Paxil is one, Zoloft is another. Um, anyways, what they sought to do was to understand whether this might have some kind of negative impact on uh, bone formation in the youths who were taking this. Many children are. Uh, they need it oftentimes. Uh, there, all, there were a, a huge array of, uh, of variables that were also being studied. Uh, blood factors, as you can see Sean doing here, um, as well as uh, a very new and exciting realm of medical research in uh, our gut bacteria. Now, what most people don't realize is that in addition to this uh, system of, uh, of, uh, of autosome, uh, natural cells in your body, you also have a. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, you also have a uh, a large ecosystem of bacteria. You actually have more of these by count in your gut than you do uh, natural cells, and these aren't really well understood. Uh, Dr. Clarge is one of the first researchers to uh, seek an association between mental illness, the treatment of mental illness, and these gut bacteria. Second study I looked at was trying to prevent this kind of bone loss. Now, while this sort of bone, while uh, in the first study, bone loss had, uh, had not uh, yet been linked conclusively to uh, SSRI use. However, it had already been linked to uh, the use of another drug called risperidone. Risperidone is an, uh, an antipsychotic. It's often used to calm uh, uh, terminally aggressive children. Uh, uh, and so what uh, Dr. Clarge sought to, do, to, uh, to figure out was whether or not this sort of bone loss could be staved off by a calcium and vitamin D supplement. Half of the participants were given a calcium and vitamin D supplement, half of them were given a sugar pill. And uh, in this bone scanner, we uh, took uh, bone density measurements every, uh, every several months or so. These were all lo very long-term studies, two-year commitments generally. And uh, yeah, and these were, and, uh, these were the, two, the two studies that I had uh, maybe the, uh, the most involvement in. Uh, what I did in the lab was largely process uh, data uh, pertinent to this. This could be a little tedious at times, but Dr. Clarge explained to me that in order to really understand what they're doing, you need to look at the data itself, and you need to look at how we've sought to plan out, basically, the contingencies of these different lives that we're always interviewing and that we're always trying to understand. And, uh, and sometimes facts of those lives fall outside of the plan. Sometimes people have smoked one cigarette, but they've done that a couple times. They're not a regular smoker like the form might expect them to be. It's really difficult to try to imagine how people fit into categories, and that's really most of psychology. Um, what I also did in the lab was uh, attend uh, what are called life meetings. Now basically, uh, most of the time it was pretty clear where somebody would fall in terms of uh, their mental illness rating through the diagnostic and statistical manual. That's what we've learned in school as, uh, as sort of the Bible of mental illness as defined by the government, basically. And uh, sometimes for the more difficult cases, we would need to uh, discuss the diagnosis. Sometimes it was a little ambiguous whether they were a four or a five on a five point scale. And uh, there are often very heated debates over who constituted a four and who constituted a five. It's a fascinating process. Uh, mental illness is not really all that clear oftentimes. It comes down to intuition. 
very often. And I was very interested in that process of developing intuition as we looked at patients who both we expected to have a sort of mental illness and patients who we didn't expect to have a mental illness and oftentimes we were surprised. Outside the lab, uh, I uh, ran a lot of poop samples back and forth, which was often <laughs> awkward. I'd have to knock on people's doors for it, which was, uh, but, you know, there, was, there were some icebreakers that one had to learn. Um, um, uh, yeah, I, uh, I feel like what I really took away from this was, uh, as RJ was hinting at, this, an, a much clearer understanding of the discrepancy between psychological theory and psychological reality. You can try to assume where everybody is going to fall. You can outline every category of person, but nobody falls cleanly into a particular category. Uh, and the process of reconciling those differences, the who are and, uh, and what categories are available, that is a very mystical and very, uh, and very uh, human sort of process. And, under, and having good interpersonal skills, the ability to really understand where somebody else is coming from, that's key to psychology. And that's really what I picked up, I think, more than anything. Another thing I picked up was the, under, was the ability to work together. <laughs> this is, uh, when I was doing data entry, I was one of two people who would uh, enter every document. There's a master enterer and a student enterer. Whenever there's a difference, it's a double check. Uh, whenever there is a conflict in the data, that would have to be resolved by an administrator. Now, oftentimes, no, we didn't really know that we weren't on the same page in terms of how we were carrying these tasks out. And it's very important to know where somebody else is at. You need to always, you can't really go into your own bubble. You need to always be in contact. Um, professionally, I think I now want to go into medical school. I didn't really know that about myself beforehand, but I not only like the, the emotional, mental, uh, sort of metaphysical almost part of psychology, but I, there's a really, uh, there's a very direct uh, biological mechanism underlying all of this. And it's fascinating to see uh, the edge of the field at the UI capsule lab and see just how our understanding of, of mental illness and of our own bodies is evolving. Uh, I also now can put this on my resume. This is a prestigious lab and I really want to keep working at places like this. Um, this I think I know what I want to do now. So I would like to thank everybody associated with the program. I would like to thank RJ. I would like to thank Jason. I would like to thank uh, my faculty uh, mentor, Su Dr. Sue Astley. I would also like to thank uh, Truman Chafin for his generous donation that allowed me to uh, drive every day down to the University of Iowa. I would also like to thank uh, uh, my site mentors, Dr. Shadi Kalarje and uh, his uh, head of research, uh, Billy Tyler.